da 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 spider man <laughs> hi folks how you doing i'm john zadar i'm the host of on top and hot and this is tuesday it is june 20th so what do we do on this show well we try to keep it light and have a little bit of fun but we are dead serious about finding hot penny stocks we are looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And me personally, I do my research looking for hot penny stocks by looking at the charts first. I don't care about the news or the filings until I find a chart that has heat. I want to see a breakout setup or a lot of volume come in or a surge that just won't quit. When I get my heated chart, then I go through the filings and the news presses of the company looking for my catalyst. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you. And I got a few to share with you right now. Well, of course I do. First one we're taking a look at here is ticker BCNN, Balakin USA. Now I found this company by looking at the charts first, like I said, and what caught my attention was the last few days she had these huge volume surges, big jumps but the price isn't moving yet. She is in a great chart. It's that atypical breakout. That 200 day SMA is coming down and it's leveling out. Price is right up underneath it, but it's not climbing yet. It's just laying down there so close, so tempting, and she has a catalyst. So I think now would be a good time to at least look at her. BCNN, she finished the day just under a half a penny at 0.0043 and just under 23% gains today. She is on the pink tier. She's current and she's got those two green ticks, the verified profile and the transfer agent we're always talking about. So she looks good. So what is this company about? Well, they tell us here that Balakin USA offers an intelligence service delivery platform that solves the last mile of installing monitoring and maintaining technology systems and smart connected devices. Tikumo means tech cloud in Japanese. And in a world of smart connected devices, there remains a last mile issue of installing, monitoring and managing such systems. Right now, the number of connected devices is exploding and the digital transformation is everywhere. And when you include the Internet of Things, this is just going to explode exponentially. There's going to be so many different devices connected. And what this company does is they deliver the device, they install the device, and they monitor the device. Worry and hassle free. That's their business. So what's the relative volume around Balakin today? Ooh, good. It's like six times their normal volume, going from about a half a million up to three million. Pretty impressive. Share structure for the company. Outstanding shares is 182 million. And if we can trust the restricted share count here, 135 million owned by the institutions, head funds, management. If they do own that many, subtract that from the outstanding, our float would be 47 million. We're gonna presume it's right. Looking at the financials for the company, there's nothing here. There's just nothing here. I don't know why it's not here, but I did pull up the most recent financial so we can at least get some numbers here. And I gotta tell you, I'm not too crazy about the numbers. All right, looking at their total assets and liabilities. Currently, they have 2.1 million in assets, but they've got six times that much in liabilities, 12.7 million. And looking at their revenues, they've dropped considerably since last year. Last year at this time, they did three quarter million dollars worth of business. This last quarter, they did $170,000 worth of business. So they've definitely had a drop. And to be honest, I don't know why. That would need some more due diligence. Disclosures for the company. We have no new disclosures over here that we need to consider. All we need to look at is that news. We are looking at news going back to the beginning of the year. Now, most of this news all came out in February. It was a real busy month for the company. Back here at the beginning of February, they changed their name and their ticker. Then they secured a nice contract with a property management company. They are implementing their smart water conservation and leak units to all of their properties. They also made two deals in February, one with on-premise networks and another one with digital signage firms. Now, to be honest, I have not dived into these because they were back in February. 
However, I did dive into the most recent news presses. These came out in May and they are big. The first one came out May 17th. The company announces strategic partnership with leading IT managed service provider. The company announces a partnership with the largest third party managed services provider to the retail industry. They support IT store technology and enterprise retailers, including top 10 North American retailers in thousands of retail locations nationwide. We are excited to announce the collaborative co-innovation partnership. When the company is fully integrated with their existing client service management systems, they will have the leading on-demand dynamic workforce solution in North America. Uniquely, the company's platform monitors and measures a core matrix of key performance indicators, creating a true sustainable bottom line change. At its core, the company provides service and cost optimization for our partners, improving quality and efficiency. Now to pick up where this one leaves off, this is just a management's discussion and analysis. It's a very simple title, but there's normally a lot of important information about what they've done and what they're gonna do. I love diving into these, and I was glad I did. Right from the start, they give us a big bullet. We expect that the revenue generated over the next 12 months from our recent customer announcements will exceed more than $6 million. The company offers a service delivery platform that solves the last mile of installing, monitoring, and maintaining technology systems and smart connected devices. It's like Uber. They're going to bring you the device, but it's also like the Geek Squad. They're going to install the device for you, and then they're going to be able to monitor it afterwards. We play at the intersection of two major trends, the Uberization of the product and service delivery and the explosion of smart connected devices brought about by the Internet of Things. Our service delivery platform was designed to intelligently automate the installation and maintenance of products by offering our on-demand local technician resources, as well as providing a smart interface for the monitoring and management of connected devices. We have recently announced Anchor customers in multiple industry segments. We expect that the revenues generated over the next 12 months from these announcements will exceed more than three times our previous annual revenues and will grow. Most of our historical revenue has come from this segment. We have completed projects for such companies as Target, Home Depot, McDonald's, U.S. Bank, 7-Eleven, and AT&T. Really? They got to do technical work for AT&T? Our median work order is approximately $50 an hour. They are working with the big retail services. They are working with homes, installing door locks, smart switches, smart thermostats, water leak sensors, all that good stuff. And they are working in the hospitality sector as well, installing panic buttons and other wireless technologies in leading hotel groups. Panic buttons. God, I hope we never have to use those. So you can see they got a lot going on and over and over again, they keep telling us we're gonna triple our revenues. We're gonna hit $6 million in revenue. And that's a big plus considering what they're doing right now. Let's go take a look at that chart. Hey, don't be too quick to judge. You know how first impressions can trick you. This is ticker BCNN, Balakin USA. And we're going to do all of our charting on TOS, also known as Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view for BCNN. Six months ago, we had a high of $1.22 in September. She took a very hard and fast drop all the way down to two cents from a dollar 22 down to two cents oh my god and she's been down here for quite a while she's had a lot of volume spurts with a couple of bumps and right now the volume is coming in again now let's see if i can zoom in on this for us this can be tricky on tos but i'll see what i can do a little more than that all right now i'm going to spread her open there you go you can see it's not a totally flat line our 200 is way up here she has been dribbling down. She got underneath all of her SMAs. She's bouncing off of the 200-day haul. Now, not a lot of people use this. I use it. The 200-day haul is very much like the 200-day SMA. 
It takes 200 days, averages all the prices together, and then gives more credence to current prices. So you get a line much closer to the price. It is bouncing off of that right now, gotten up over top of the nine, and is working through the 20-day SMA. And like I said, the volume is increasing right now. You can see it is getting strong. Osculators, they're really tough to read. They're really flat. I can see our RSI is climbing right now. Hopefully we get a better view on our 20-day, one-hour view. Much better. So we had a high in the last 20 days of 0064. It was yesterday we hit that low of 0034. Off of that low bubble, we've been bouncing. We've gotten over the nine day, over that 200 day haul. And let's see, we are over the 20 and right on the 50 day SMA right now. I mean, right exactly on top of it. And our oscillators show we have recovery coming. Strength is building up. We have a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator. You can read this exactly the same way you read the MACD. They're akin to each other. Our MACD is a crossover right now and the green bars are accumulating and our RSI is still climbing, coming from 39 up to 53. Five day, five minute view. So she was above her 50, then way below it ran to it real fast. What a huge bar right there. Broke through the 50, fell back down to her nine and bounced. And right now she is just over top of that 50 day SMA without any 200 on the board. So this is her king and God, the 50 day SMA. Osculators are looking good. Our crossover is about ready to happen right now in the PPO. We're about ready to cross the signal line. Look at our green bars getting bigger and bigger. The RSI has had a little bit of pullback. It hit this high and pulled back, going to 0049 and falling back to 0043. I like BCNN. She hasn't got everything going good for her. Her financials are a little wobbly, but the chart is set up for a breakout if it has a little bit of push. And the news we read today looks like it could do that. I think BCNN is worth putting on your watch list. It's free to do, and it might cost you if you don't. Next stock on the chopping block is MGO Global, ticker MGOL. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ and her chart is exciting. On June 7th, she broke out. She had this huge jump of over 100%. And for the life of me, I cannot find a catalyst in the filings or the news presses. Maybe there was a tweet, I don't know. She came back down, but only part way. And now she's bouncing back up and she's looking like she's ready to take off. And when you look at the news, you're going to see a pattern there. The company definitely knows how to stir their investors up to get them to move the charts. And I think we're in that kind of moment right now. So MGOL, she finished today at $2.64 with almost 26% gains. They got a little bit of a description here, but we get a lot more jumping into a news press. They tell us here that the company was founded in October 2018 and they're headquartered in Florida but they have remote employees and specialty contractors in London, New York, and Latin America. The company is a performance-driven lifestyle brand portfolio company focused on direct-to-consumer digital commerce. They help companies with their branding. They make companies popular and they sell these products online. The company launched its first direct-to-consumer brand, The Messy Store. It could be Messy, <laughs> the Messy store, which offers a premium line of functional and sporty casual wear, accessories, and homewares inspired by the legendary pro soccer player, Leo Messi, and created by Ginny Hilford. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, let's see what we got going on over here. Whoa, look at that. What a huge jump going from 3.3 million to just over 12 million. You're looking at 350, 400% increase with big numbers. That's a nice pop. Share structure for MGOL. We got a low float. Now, I don't know what the float is, but I see our outstanding share count is only 14 million. Anything under 10 million is a low float. Well, it may be 13 million. I don't care. That's still a low float in my book. Financials for MGO Global. At the end of 2022, they had just over a million dollars increasing from the two previous years. Quarterly, 
Ah, they took a drop this last quarter, almost 50%, dropping from uh, 711,000 to 334,000. Not sure what brought that on. Disclosures for the company. Well, we really don't have a whole lot over here, but their most recent financial, which is a big deal. You're really interested in the company, you'll hear me say this over and over again. Forget about doing searches on Google. Just dive into the most recent financial, 10Q, 10K, doesn't matter. You will get all the history of the company from the day they started right up till now, or at least up until the date of that financial. So save yourself a lot of hassle and get more information for your time invested. Jump into that financial first. All right, let's take a look at that news now. What really surprised me here is that the company has lots of news, but there is no news up here. This is where they put all the dedicated news just about this company. But thank God they do import news from other places online, and they got lots of it down here. Now this goes back to April, and each one of these news presses has a jump on the chart. That is what really caught my attention. When this company puts out a news press, the charts react to it. Well, I am back here to April, they tell us here that the company's AI-powered marketing engine and smart brand building strategies are driving dynamic sales growth of the messy store. Then they tell us that they are going to host their first quarter 2023 results. The stock jumped. Then they bring out their results on the 16th of May. The stock surges. Well, here we go again. The stock is starting to run right now. We just had news come out on the 12th MGO Global exceeds full year 2022 revenues in the first five months of 2023. And that really is all the news. That's what they tell us. Then they go on to say, with our full second quarter results expected to be filed, we look forward to providing much greater details of our financial performance for the three and six months ended June 30th, 2023. No, not a whole lot of information there. Speculation. They're leaving room for speculation. And I tell you what, penny stock traders love to speculate. They will think the biggest and the best. And this company is doing more. They are growing and the stock looks good on the charts, which is really what caught my attention in the first place. And I think it's going to catch yours too. Let's go take a look at that. Let's take a gander at MGOL, MGO Global, six month, four hour chart, and that's all her chart. This is the day she came on the market, January 13th. She started off way down here at about five bucks and she shot up to $16.61 before she fell fast and furious. She hit a low bubble here of 91 cents part way through April. Now I'm going to zoom in on this area so you can see what's going on. She tapped the 200 here, broke it right there, and right now she is ripping and climbing. Now, I like what we see here because the 200 was falling, leveled out, and is now pushing up. If we take a channel bar here and we can throw a line from the top of this one right here across the top of there. Now, I'm not hitting all of them, but I've hit this one, I've hit this one, and I've hit that one. This one is poked out of the channel and that's poked out of the channel and right now she's working to break that channel again and she is bouncing hard on her 50 day SMA. Volume was real strong right here and again it is strong today. Now what else I want to show you here is our Fibonacci. I really like this tool. It tells me a lot about what's going on on the chart. I am going to poke this surge where it began down here. And then I'm going to poke the surge where it ended up there. What I am looking for is the 50% mark, the halfway point. I want to see what it threw on the table. It is going to let us keep at least 50% of it. If it comes underneath the 50, there's a very strong likelihood it's going to keep falling down to the strong SMA. But if it stays above it, there's a stronger probability it's going to start growing. So what do we got here? Well, she came way up here, came down under the 50, bounced, came back up, and she's been there for, what, five or six days, living on the halfway point. I'm liking that. That is a secure position. And then today, she got confident, and she took off running, bounced off the 50, hit a high here of $2.07, and she's rolled back to $2.64. Volume was strong today. And our oscillators are all pushing up. Every single one of them, including the RSI, is on fire right now in the overbought. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. 
All right, so she was under the 200 day here until this surge started. That's what got her up and over all of this. She fell back down to her 50 day SMA and then hung out on our halfway point, the 50% mark of our Fibonacci. Looking really sweet here. There's our 50 day SMA turning up along with our 200 and our 20s crossing the 200. Everything looks great. She is floating here on her nine day SMA and after market hour, she hit a new high of $3.02. All of our osculators are pushing up. You cannot go wrong if every osculator is pushing up. Five day, five minute. She was hugging that 200 day SMA for the last four days until today she broke away. She is flying high, hitting that high and bouncing back, landing on her 50 day SMA secure. You can see this is where she's paying all of her homage and respect. Osculators show she's cooling off right now. She hit that high bubble and fell down, but she is not falling. She is sitting nicely, but everything shows that it's just now starting to turn up. You can see we're just now getting our crossovers, getting ready to climb again. And even on the five minute, our 200 day SMA is pointing up on all three of the charts we looked at. This looks good to me, folks. I like MGOL. And with those revenues that they promise coming in, that's going to get people excited because that's what happens. Every time they say they got revenues, financials coming out, the stock runs. They just did it. Let's see if it runs. MGOL, it can't hurt to put it on your watch list. What? We're looking at GEGI again? Didn't we look at this twice last year and just on the 12th? Absolutely. But you know, since we looked at it on the 12th, it's gone up a hundred percent and looks like it's still climbing and they just had another hot piece of news come out. So yes, we are looking at GEGI again. Genesis Electronics Group, she finished the day today at 0037. When we looked at it, it was 0018. So we have had over a hundred percent gain since the 12th. She is on the pink tier current. Got both those green ticks looking good. So what does this company do? What? You don't know yet? Okay. I'll tell you what they do. Genesis Electronics Group through its wholly owned subsidiary Glide is building the first of its kind autonomous road to rail shipping vehicles called gliders. Gliders will enable fully loaded semi trailers access to rails where traditionally it didn't make sense. Genesis Electronics Group plans on owning and operating each glider in its fleet and providing glider as a service business models. This is a whole new technology, being able to drive on roads, then move onto the railroad track, then move off back onto the roads. And what they're planning on doing is going from private property to rail to private property. This is a fantastic idea and it's necessary. And with the news that just came out, things are changing fast. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Wow. All of them have been jumping today. We went from 37 million up to 66 million. These are huge numbers and huge increases. Share structure for GEGI. Oh, why do I always forget they have way too many shares? Outstanding share count is 2.1 billion. If this is how many shares they have on the inside. That means that there are 1.3 billion shares in the float. That's a huge float. We've always got to be worried about a reverse split. Keep your ears and eyes open for such a thing. Financials for GEGI are still nil. They don't have any money coming in, but when you look at the news, they do have orders coming in. They've made new partners. They've got a factory going up. So everything is happening right now. Plus the new catalyst disclosures. We got anything new over here since we were here last? Uh, no, nothing here. So let's jump on over to that news. Now, the fact is we have covered most of this news already in the June 12th video, but I will highlight some of the important stuff here. We got two deals that they made in April. One was with Taylor Transport and the other one is with Portland Vancouver Junction Railroad. Each one of these companies is allowing Glider to use their railroad spurs, their roads, their entire property to work on their Glider. And Taylor Transport is actually buying some of these Gliders as well. 
these companies are excited to be a part of this. Then we had a piece of news that came out at the beginning of June. The company is announcing that they are implementing new rail testing and safety inspection equipment on their gliders so that they can inspect the railroads as they're going and coming from wherever they go to. Now, you would think they'd already have this on the trains, wouldn't you? But they don't. So this is a big deal for them. This is going to help the railroad companies. Then they had the news on the 12th. This is when we looked at it. They made a deal here. The company announced that it has signed a binding exclusive manufacturing partnership agreement with BART Manufacturing Inc. to build the glide units. BART already has the factory. He's going to let them use it. Glide and BART also confirmed that the production of all electric glide units is projected to start at the end of this summer. It's already built. There's nothing to slow them down from getting going. So they're doing it right now. Now, the vice president of BART Manufacturing says down here, we are delighted to partner with Glide and support in bringing this vision to a reality. We feel that this bleeding edge technology combined with our goal to achieving carbon neutrality is an important corporate goal and integral to our purpose to help build a better world which segues me right into the piece of news that came out on the 15th. The recent ban on sales of new diesel trucks in California supports the need for Glide's technology. The company commented today that the recent ban that California regulators made on April 28th of this year on sales of new diesel big rigs by 2036 and the requirement that all trucks be zero emissions by 2042 will put great pressure on the market to find solutions that don't compromise the amount of weight that can be carried and the revenue that can be generated. Currently, manufacturers have not identified a commercially viable way to provide sufficient battery range that trucks require on a daily basis without compromising the amount of cargo that can be hauled. Glide autonomous vehicles are perfectly situated to solve this problem. Check this out. Glide vehicles, when fully loaded with a semi-trailer, will be able to carry three to four times more the amount of weight as an average semi-trailer. What this means is that the Glide vehicles can add more weight past the 80,000 pound gross weight limit for tractor trailers on the road because these vehicles will only go from private property to rail back to private property. That is going to be very enticing to companies that they can increase their loads by three to four times as much and not the expense. I think this is hot, folks. Now, there's a lot of time here. I'll grant you that. 2036 and 2042. But they've been given a deadline, all these companies. So I can assure you, lots of them are going to be on the lookings for something like this. So I think this is a hot catalyst and the chart is still hot, ready to run some more. Let's go take a look at it. Yes, we're looking at GEGI again because it's got a hot chart. This is Genesis Electronics Group's six-month, four-hour view. The two blue lines tell us when we were here last. We were here when she hit that high bubble, 0084 back in October. We looked at it that day. And the very next day, oh my God, I'm sorry. She fell hard and furious. My sincere apologies, folks. You know I didn't see that coming. And I don't know why she fell. But she wasn't done falling. She kept falling all the way to May, where she hit 0005. And it wasn't until June she started to show any life. We had an incentive bump here. That's our first crack through the 200 with a lot of volume. That's when you need to start looking at it, the first incentive bump. She then started working very slowly to get up over that 200. And when she did, that was it. No more negotiating, no more thinking about it. She's on a run. We looked at it on the 12th. She was at 0018. Right now she's at 0037. So that was over 100% gain so far. All of our SMAs are laid out nicely and don't overlook all that volume. We got a ton of it coming in right now. All of our osculators are very strong. They are cooled off a little bit, but they are all starting to turn back up right now. The four hour chart looks juicy to me. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Beautiful chart, low bubble in this corner, triple zero seven, high bubble over here of double zero four five. Are you kidding me? Triple zero seven to four five. That is what? 
600% gains? Oh my God. Yeah, you wanted to look at it back here for sure. She got up. She is riding on her, looks like it's the 20-day SMA. She did not hit the 50 here. She came down over the 20, bouncing off our 200 haul, but back to the 20. And she's sitting up there right now. Oscillators look like they've cooled off a little bit, but our 200-day SMA is churning up, and all the SMAs are looking nice. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. Okay. So here's where we looked at it. Boy, a perfect time, right? Look at that run right there over the next two days, hitting that high. She did fall down through the 200, pretty scary in this zone, came back up, and right now she is sitting firmly on that 200-day SMA, looking like she's done going down. She wants to start climbing again. Our oscillators, they are starting to push up. You can see that. They are all starting to push up right now. They are starting to climb again. I like GEGI. She's got a lot going for her. She's not making any revenues right now, but they've had orders. They've got partners that want to be involved. They've got a factory that they're going to be working in right now. They should be making their very first ones. So revenues are going to start coming in. And now with this new news about California, a huge state, we don't know how many companies could reach out to Glider and say, hey, I want a dozen of those or so. I like Glider. Put Glider on your watch list, folks. All the stocks we've looked at at least deserve that. Now, just so no one thinks I've lost my noodle here, I know this is Batman and not Spider-Man. I was just being facetious. Now, the three stocks I gave you today have got pretty decent charts. Some of them are ready to run. Some of them are just getting ready to break out. BCNN and MGOL are both talking about increasing their revenues. That's always exciting people. BCNN has just made a deal that's going to help their revenues grow big time. And then GEGI. They're not making any money, but things are getting going now. Look at how the profits have been pouring in this month in June. Huge gains. Definitely, folks, do some more research and due diligence. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.